So we got a little bit of breaking news we got to talk about. And of course, of course, it happens as soon as I finish filming this video. But I wanted to talk about this because this is something that I think affected the Eagles somewhat. Because I think the Eagles would have had real interest in Daryl Henderson. But the Jacksonville Jaguars claim him off waivers. They pick him up, which is a great move by them. I think Doug Peterson's making the right choice here. I never really thought... Daryl Henderson could get to the Eagles in terms of waivers. I didn't think it would be possible, and it would be curious to see if the Eagles actually put a claim in for him, but he would have been a great fit. But now he's picked up by the Jaguars. It is what it is. I can tell you this. Forget Melvin Gordon. I don't want any part of Melvin Gordon. Any part. That means Trey Sermon, get your shoes ready, get your helmet ready, get your ass ready, because Sunday Night Football, if it's up to me, I'm putting him in versus the Green Bay Packers. Now, let's start this video. One team goes out and gets the best wide receiver they possibly could get. The other team gets rid of maybe the best wide receiver in the NFL. And you wonder why one team is good and one team stinks? You want a war? You're going to get one. What was that? He had no time for one more play. What the roughway screwed us? The brother screwed us. I'm upset, but the brother screwed us. At least they fought back and tried. Yeah, you, 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 you literally the screwed us. The brother screwed us. Yeah, we had one bad opportunity for one more play. Dallas still stinks. The way of King Ding back here, and I hope everybody's having a great day because today is the eve of Thanksgiving. That's right, Thanksgiving is here tomorrow, and one thing I'm thankful for is eggnog. I love mother humping eggnog. It is almost eggnog time, yo. And tomorrow, when it hits my lips, I'm gonna get shivers down my spine. It's gonna be, uh, yeah. Eggnog time, yo. It's almost here. Another thing I'm I'm thankful for is the fact that the Eagles are not the Packers. The Eagles don't trade top talent. The Eagles don't let it out the door. They don't have a Hall of Fame quarterback that they waste his career on. The Eagles don't play like that, and I'm thankful for it. Now, before we get into all of this, if you're new to the channel and you like the content, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe, more importantly, for daily Eagles content, NFL content. You don't want to miss it. We will be streaming the Eagles game this Sunday, and if you've been subscribed for a while, just double check. Double boo ball check. Make sure you're still subscribed. I just like how that sounds. Okay, it's stupid, but I like it. But it's true, though. Uh, YouTube's been acting weird again. I'm getting people telling me, hey, I'm unsubscribed. I don't know why. So just, just check. Make sure everything's cool so you're ready to go this weekend. And also, as far as my schedule goes, leading up to the Eagles Sunday night game, um, tomorrow I've decided I'm not going to do the Cowboys a Giants game. I, I'm i going to hang out with the family. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch it on the big screen. I'm going to sit back, drink eggnog, and enjoy it. Um, you know, the way I figure, you're going to have pro probably plenty of Cowboy fans streaming it, plenty of Giant fans streaming it. Who wants the crazy Eagle fan to hear it? Nobody wants to hear from me. So I, I'm, I'm probably going to just kick back tomorrow and relax. I will have a preview prediction video on Friday. I'm also going to have uh, I have I have three unboxings I'm going to be doing, so I'm going to have a video on that. I have three unboxings. I'm behind the news, um, so I got to catch up and I got to show you some of the stuff I got. You're not going to believe it, but I got an unboxing video. Probably that'll be out Friday or Saturday. We have the Philly Shakedown Saturday night, and then of course Sunday's regular schedule. We're streaming the Eagles game. We'll be streaming something in the afternoon on Sunday as well. So look for all that now. Before I get into the Eagles stuff, uh, the current Eagles stuff, I have to say this, and I said this at the end of my video yesterday, and I got to say it again. Um, Eric Allen is, I guess, one of 28 semifinalists for the Hall of Fame. I have to make my, my voices known about this. Eric Allen is one of the greatest all-around cornerbacks I've ever seen. Talking about a guy who can cover, who can tackle, who can blitz, who gets turnovers, 
Eric Allen was one of the greatest to ever do it. He belongs in the Hall of Fame, and it'll be highway robbery. Highway robbery again if Eric Allen does not get in the Hall of Fame. So here's my wishes that he gets in. I know he's a semifinalist or whatever. He's made that he's made that cup before. Uh, let me let me get him in the Hall of Fame this year. Seriously. The guy deserves it. If he was a Dallas Cowboy, he would have been in years ago. That's just the truth. Because if you wear that satanic star on your helmet, guess what? You get in a lot easier. But he or he wore the greatest, greatest logo in the history of all sports. This one right there. Needs to bring it back. But shout out to Eric Allen. Hopefully he makes it. Also, I got to tell you, I love Ndamukong Sue. I love him. I love players that hate teams, that hate rivalries, that it's like ingrained in you. You learn to hate a team and you hate it. And you're not scared to express it. I, well, I love hearing when the Eagle players say, man, we hate Dallas. We hate that team. Can't stand Dallas. I love that. There's something very beautiful about that. And I, I thought it was interesting because interesting because they were talking about Ndamukong Sue going up against Aaron Rodgers again. You know, many different uh, battles they've had over the years. But this is what he said. And I thought, I thought this was fantastic. I thought, this is what you want. This is exactly what you want from a player on your team. Here's what Ndamukong Sue said. He said, I dislike the Packers very much. So I have all the desire to get after that quarterback and create havoc against the offense. Uh, I love it. Just hate them. Go out and make them pay big time. I thought it was a great, great quote. Uh, so I, I'm loving the Dominican Sue uh, and Joseph. I think I think they're going to fit right in. I expect a lot more reps for him from him this week, and I think that they're going to give that offensive line problems. Uh, I think the Packers obviously, and we'll talk about this in the preview video. Obviously, they got to try to run the ball uh, with, with Jones and Dylan. They have to. If they can't run the ball, they're going to get screwed. You know, they're going to get screwed. And really, I mean, when you look at the Packers. Uh, they really screwed themselves, right? Uh, the, if you look at the Eagles and you look at the Packers and you look at both these teams, both these franchises coming into the season, they went in both different directions. Both of them went completely different directions. You have the Packers, right? And you have Devontae Adams, who's probably the best receiver in football. Uh, I mean, he's putting up crazy statistics, right? I think one year he had 18 touchdowns, and another year he had like 11 touchdowns. But he he's puts up crazy numbers with Aaron Rodgers. They trade him for what? First and second round pick because they can't sign him. Okay, that's bad enough. That's bad enough that you go out and you trade him because you can't pay him. But they don't replace him with anybody. They go out and they draft Watson, who may turn out to be good. They have Lazard. They have some guys. But none of them... Or Devontae Adams, and clearly you can look at Aaron Rodgers, the way Aaron Rodgers has played this year, his he, he doesn't look right. This has got to be Aaron Rodgers' worst year in a long time. Now I say that, and the guy still has thrown 19 touchdown passes, just to let you know. So Aaron Rodgers is still very good, he's still very, very dangerous, and the Eagles are going to have to be very, very careful. However, he doesn't look right, he doesn't look the same. And I would got I gotta think that if you're Aaron Rodgers, if I'm Aaron Rodgers, I, I'm just being honest, if I'm Aaron Rodgers, I'm out of Green Bay this year. I want out. I want to go to another team. I want to go somewhere where I have a chance to win. I guess Denver may need another quarterback because because Wilson stinks this year. But in all seriousness, if I'm Rodgers, I'm out of there after this year. I'm gonna go. I gotta go somewhere where I have talent around me because I think Aaron Rodgers. As, as though he has struggled, and he has. And there have been times he's looked really bad. He still has 19 touchdowns. He's still putting up big numbers. And to me, if you had Devontae Adams and you had the talent that they had the past few years, uh, this wouldn't be the case. Okay, And you could see that the Packers are struggling because of it. Let me let me say this, too. All right, uh, it's, not, it, it's, it's bad that they go out, they let Devontae Adams walk, Okay, fine, whatever, you can't sign him. But you don't bring in anybody, any veteran, anybody to replace him. You bring nobody in to p replace him, right? So you really don't upgrade that position. You don't even, you know, you don't even try to adjust a little bit. You don't bring anybody in. You, you draft some players, but we'll see how long that takes. And then what's even worse is you come into the season. You're going through the regular season. Clearly, you can see your quarterback needs weapons. He does not have the weapons he has in the passing game in the past, and it's hurting him, and he's struggling, 
and a team needs some help, they don't go out and make one single move at the trade deadline to try to upgrade him. Like, why on earth would the Packers not be going after Odell Beckham Jr.? Why the Cowboys and the Giants, but not the Packers? And I'm not saying, I mean, the Packers are at the point now, if they lose another game, you know, they may they may just shut Rodgers down for the year. But for the last month, when you still had a chance, if you got it going, to go out and maybe bring in somebody else, they didn't do it. They didn't bring in anybody. Meanwhile, the Philadelphia Eagles, they go in this offseason, they go out and they trade a first-round pick and they get A.J. Brown, bring him in, and you see the difference in Jalen Hurts. Uh, one, Jalen Hurts working hard and, and he deserves everything he's getting. But you, you can't tell me that the addition of A.J. Brown hasn't been super significant for the Philadelphia Eagles. It is. It's important for a quarterback to have weapons to throw to. I don't care what quarterback is, you have to have weapons to throw to. Think about New England Patriots. The last few years of, of Tom Brady, they couldn't, he had no weapons. He had nothing there. And what did he do? He goes to Tampa, gets weapons, he wins a Super Bowl. You have to give your quarterback weapons. And when you have a 38-year-old quarterback who's got maybe a few years left, why on earth would you not go all in with him? See, I think the Packers, Packer fans especially, I think they were spoiled in a lot of ways. They had Brett Favre, Hall of Fame quarterback. And then right after him, they have Aaron Rodgers, Hall of Fame quarterback. And because of those quarterbacks, that front office for a lot of years has gotten away probably doing less for free agency than anybody else. They've done a great job with their draft picks, but now they're in a situation where I don't know that you have time to let your draft picks develop. So the Eagles and the Packers going to Sunday night, it's interesting because they're two different teams that went two totally different ways. The Philadelphia Eagles went out and added players. Listen, we're, we're still talking about adding players. We're talking about what's going on with Daryl Henderson Jr. I would love to get Daryl Henderson Jr. I'm waiting to see what it, whether or not he clears waivers, somebody picks him up. But if he clears waivers, if I'm the Eagles, I'm jumping on that in a heartbeat. You know what I mean? So not not so much Melvin Gordon. I'm not touching Melvin Gordon. But Daryl Henderson Jr., absolutely 100,000%. But the Eagles are still looking to get better. The Packers, not so much. And I get why the Packers may not be with the record that they have now. But a month ago, they should have been doing something. A month and a half ago, they should have been doing something. Uh, back in August, they should have been doing something. September, they should have been doing something. They didn't do nothing. And now they stink. And they deserve to stink. And at least they still beat the Cowboys. But the Eagles, totally the opposite. Eagles go out. They added players. They added A.J. Brown. They added weapons. They added players on defense. They actually tried to get better to help a quarterback. And oh, by the way, their quarterback isn't 38 years only with one two-year window left. Their quarterback is just getting started. Totally different mindsets for from the Eagles and the Packers. And I believe the Packers got away with that for a long time because they had Brett Favre and they had uh, Aaron Rodgers. And they did decent on some of their draft picks. But now... That, that Rodgers is pushing maybe last year in Green Bay, maybe a few years left, and they should be all in, they blew it. They flat out blew it. The Eagles, they're headed in the right direction. That's why we will beat that team's ass this Sunday night. We'll talk about that in the preview prediction video. And the Eagles will continue to look to get better and will continue to reap the rewards of having multiple draft picks, multiple first-round picks, all the things that Howie's done. Great job, GM of the year. That's what I think, but... These are two different teams. These two different teams go going in opposite directions. And they're going to meet Sunday night, and I'd feel bad to be a Packer. But I'll say this. They, if they can run the ball, and, and with Aaron Rodgers, you never know. Yeah, it could be a closer game than a lot of us think. But I'm excited about it nonetheless. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. Like I said, I will have a... a I will have my preview prediction video out on Friday, and I'll have a couple unboxings coming Friday or Saturday or Friday and Saturday. Uh, just It's just a matter of editing. They're already filmed, um, but look for those as well. Uh, with that said, take care. Talk to you later. Of course, don't be a dingbat. Happy Thanksgiving. And remember, it's how we vision. We're all just living in it.
So as we go into Thanksgiving tomorrow, let me just say I am totally thankful for each and every one of you guys. Even the trolls and the haters, thank you so much uh, for all the support you guys give to me. It truly means a lot. Um, I know I've had the last couple of videos, I haven't answered a lot of comments. Uh, it's just been kind of crazy uh, leading up to Thanksgiving. But I'm going to sit down and I'm going to go through those uh, probably tomorrow. Um, you know, and I just hope each and every one of you guys have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, you may see me tomorrow if the Cowboys do something stupid and choke and I got to come on here and laugh about it or the Giants because really I don't care who wins. Um, doesn't matter to me. Uh, the best case scenario probably is a tie, but I hope these teams go out and beat the, beat the hell out of each other. Now, the Dallas is favored by nine points. I do have the Giants getting nine points, but I still think they're going to lose. I'm just hoping that they cover. But, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. And if I don't see you tomorrow, definitely, definitely we'll see you on Friday. Uh, take care. And Denzel Washington, out.